Good morning. It is day 17 post off after my BBL 360 lipo, arm lipo, chin lipo. Just got my lashes did. Let me tell you what, that wasn't too comfy. So I would recommend that anywhere you go, you take your BBL pillow with you. Um, even if you're gonna get a massage, no matter what you're gonna do. So what I did was I took my BBL pillow, I put it uh, on my lower back, and that's how I laid on my back to get my lashes done. It wasn't the most comfortable thing, but it was doable for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. What I did was I brought, I bit my legs, put the BBL pillow on my lower back, and then sometimes my lower back was kind of bothering me, so what I would do is I would bend my knees and then I'd actually bring my feet closer to my booty and I would almost do like a bridge and like engage my glutes and engage my core and that took some pressure off my lower back. It's about 11 a.m. I'm gonna have a piece of pork belly with a tiny bit of uh, bell peppers with some everything with the bagel, bagel seasoning on top. Honestly, just got back to Puerto Rico. I'm just eating whatever I have available, whatever's going to uh, expire the fastest or rot the fastest. So, uh, and then obviously the pork belly is nice and fatty. So, uh, honestly, I've been really good at following pretty much all the rules that I've been given by Dr. Torres, but eating plentiful and frequently, can't say I've been doing that. My appetite has been very, very low. Um, I've just been naturally, uh, uh, um, what would you call it, intermittent fasting because I just don't get hungry that frequently or it's usually like later in the day. Like I've been averaging my first meal at probably 1 p.m. Eating at 11 is a little bit early for me um, and I've been eating really small portions. I'm just like not going to stuff myself if I'm not really feeling super hungry. I refuse to do that, intuitive eating, and honestly the whole point of that is to basically preserve your booty. But the truth of the matter is that I kind of want to lose it. It's still a little bit too big for me. I was watching back videos from day one where he said three weeks out and I'd be, have a better idea what my booty would look like. I'm almost three weeks out and it's too big for me. So I'm like, do I lay on it? Do I stop eating? I want this thing to kind of shrink. It's a little bit too big for me. What I really haven't mentioned is that the whole point of all of this was I was way more excited about doing the 360 lipo than the, than the fat transfer. That was just like part of the package. So I was just like, okay, like, round it out make it look more natural but here i am with maybe a booty too big whoops my voice is going to sound weird i have a little bit of a list because i just i have um what teeth whitening uh trays in okay so i got this shirt yesterday at zara is it yeah that place anyways a medium really liking how it fits um it would be really hard previously for me to wear a kind of like a crop top like this. Like my roll would be hanging here. These are shorts I already have that fit pretty snug. And you could see how much room is back here. So this would be an outfit that I really wouldn't have felt all that comfortable in. And now I'm just like, yeah, super comfortable. I could totally wear this and feel comfortable and not think twice about my my clothes like fitting snug in a particular area so pretty stoked about that just like <sighs> god this is worth like every freaking penny okay so i wanted to basically give you an update on my body how i'm feeling about it on this 17th day post op i just want to make sure here that you could see everything okay so um, still swollen in this area, but it's gone down significantly. These underwear, it's crazy how much looser they are compared to the first day I tried them on. Um, super freaking happy with this. Super, super excited. I mean, I had so much more fat here, and this is still swollen. This is still going to go down. Like, gravity just takes everything to this area. So, looking forward to like one, two months in, and that's swelling to go down a lot. When it comes to my hips, okay, so um, it's kind of weird. I feel like they go out and then in, like there's kind of an indention here. I hope this gets smaller. I think it's too wide for me, but I don't know. I mean, maybe like that. I just, I feel like a wide load a little bit, but not as bad as the beginning. I don't know if the swelling has gone down or if I'm just getting used to my wideness. You can see here the puffiness, still a lot of puffiness down here. Mild bruising. 
Just a little bit of bruising here, a little bit of bruising there, a little slight bruising here, some bruising here. I think my arms, oh, just a small bruise at the top of my arms. Pretty happy with my butt. It's still a little bit too big for me. Loving my back. Oh my gosh. Those rolls are gone. Really freaking exciting. My incisions all look pretty darn good. I'm just like really happy overall and it's only three weeks in and I know the results are only going to get better. So I've been really itching to buy new clothes, but I know I gotta wait to try things on until I get a little bit less swollen, but I'm super pumped with my results thus far. Super, super pumped. All right, just picked up my Faja from the seamstress. So um, I didn't, she asked if I wanted to try it on. I just put one on. I don't really feel like taking it off and putting another one on. I'm sure it's fine. So I paid, uh, she charged me $15 to fix it. She basically took it into the back center, um, like stitching or whatever. She took that seam in. And so hopefully it fits a little bit tighter. Right now I'm just wearing the large. So she fixed the double XL. I'm wearing a large right now with no foam or board just because I'm like trying to get a lot of things done. And sometimes it's just, I just feel so stiff when I have to wear the foam and the board inside. So I, kind of have been like slightly slacking a little bit when it comes to like sometimes i'll just wear the smaller one with no foam with no foam and no ab board um it just kind of depends for convenience purposes so i mean i'm mo mostly following the rules not all of them but most of the time like the majority of the time i'm following the rules so gonna go potentially to a faja store i gotta go to costco first have a massage today at 4 30. it's currently three o'clock i've had one small meal for the day my appetite has been like super suppressed so um just kind of a uh, interesting thing there i've been curious like this whole time leading up to see how my appetite's going to change my body is still in the healing process therefore i'm anticipating my appetite to be really low if you just see what animals do right when they're sick they don't eat they don't drink they just rest um yesterday i did kind of have to take a nap at about 5 p.m so i was a little bit on the tired side but i did start my period yesterday so far my period has been normal i kind of wasn't anticipating to actually start it on time because of traveling plus the procedure but i i sometimes get in deep thought about like this procedure and like trauma towards my body which it is um but you know i don't know it doesn't seem as intense as the trauma that the 54 day long fast into my body but i'm just like so happy with how i feel my mobility and just like my mood and my attitude and so just a lot to be happy about so don't do what i did don't get too excited about trying new clothes on because i got a bunch of aquaphor all over this cute shirt but i like it so much if it doesn't come out i'm going to go buy it again so what I did was I just put baby powder all over the stains uh, because I stained it basically on the side because I have an incision on my back on the side of my back. And so I had just gotten out of the shower. I thought it was smart to put on Aquaphor band-aids and try on clothes. Mistake. Don't do it. You're going to like mess up your clothes. So it's exciting to try new things on to see how they fit. But um, just be careful and probably don't put anything on your incisions. So you don't get grease all over your stuff. So I thought it'd be interesting to check my ketones and it is pretty interesting. Um, I just had a meal which consisted of bell peppers, pork belly, as well as I had half of one of the nut bars from Costco, like the chocolate nut bars. And then earlier today I had another piece of pork belly with bell peppers. So that's been my food for today. So I'm kind of just naturally leaning on the lower carb side of things um, for a few reasons. I don't really think that I have much of a carb heavy diet in general. And I'm kind of like leaning more towards lower carb foods just because I know it's gonna help with the inflammation and the swelling by doing that. And also I don't really have a ton of like super high carb foods in my house to begin with. So yeah, pretty interesting after um, I would say that bar probably had maybe like 15 to 20 grams of carbs. I had half of it and then some carbs in the bell peppers, but still coming in at point two. What I'm really curious about is that if you're in ketosis, 
Does your body prioritize the fat that was just moved or does your body go for fat that was already there, right? So I wonder if my body is basically being fueled by the fat in my ass that was transferred or if it's being fueled from fat from other areas of my body. I mean, I don't know if there's studies out there. I don't know if there's any way to like figure that out, but something I'm very curious about.